Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2's remake has recently got a next-gen re-release, a cross-gen deluxe edition as it's called. The upgrade enhances visuals and performance on the newest consoles and adds in a very interesting 120Hz mode for all next-gen machines. To talk about this today, I'm joined by an actual skateboarding legend, John Linneman. How you doing there, John? Pretty good. I don't know about that. <laughs> More like... Uh... <laughs> I'm a big fan and longtime player of the Tony Hawk games. And the only reason that I think you're doing this video instead of me is that uh, I had other projects on the table. So you got a chance to take take the Hawk for a spin. Yeah, and I'm pretty pleasantly surprised by this next-gen version. I've uh, been playing it across Xbox Series S, Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5, and I even dipped into the PC and Xbox One X version just for comparison's sake. And I'm actually on all consoles. I'm really impressed with the quality of this year, even the last gen on that Xbox One X version. It's really great. Um, it's really good. And it was even good on uh, the last gen base consoles and everything. Like they did an excellent job. They definitely did. And I recommend everyone in the audience here, if you have not seen it already, go watch John's DF Retro EX video on this game and also the previous games in the series. It's an awesome video and I really love it. But yeah, let's get right into this analysis right here, starting with the graphical update itself. Uh, before we get into resolution, the game does not just upgrade resolution performance, it also does uh, enhance the graphics in minor ways. And I think the best way to see that is to look at the best last gen version on console, Xbox One X, and putting it against the kind of worst next-gen version in the Xbox Series S in fidelity mode. There's two modes, essentially, fidelity and performance. In the fidelity mode on Xbox Series S, running at that same resolution as Xbox One X, essentially, uh, you can see some differences when you put them side by side. There's more bloom on the Xbox Series S version and all the other consoles as well, the, the newer consoles. And there's a slightly different post-processing, essentially where the image kind of looks punchier, I would describe it, like where you can see it's a little bit darker. The dynamic range kind of looks more adjusted towards darkness, oddly enough. And this makes it so you can see the light beams that the game has, which are just kind of faked light beams. It's not really real volumetrics. Uh, they just kind of show up more. Another difference is that on Xbox Series S and of course Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 is that the shadow range for real-time shadows is further and higher res, and it blends further into the distance with the static shadows. And the last kind of really big difference that I noticed, uh, definitely in side-by-side -side and playing the back and forth, is that the anti-aliasing is now much better on the next-gen consoles in comparison to the last gen. Oh, yeah. Much less shimmer and motion, even on Xbox Series S running at that same resolution as Xbox One X there. Interesting then, because um, I did see some comments when this first released that it looked a little different and I saw some folks talking about oh it's crushing uh, the black levels and such like that but playing it myself I don't really think that's the case I just think they have changed some of the post-processing effects and like some of the lighting as you say uh, it has a slightly different look uh, if you set up your HDR correctly though it does look still excellent another thing is of course that's the fidelity mode in the performance mode uh, the game looks essentially the exact same, except for the fact that I noticed that in performance mode across all these next-gen consoles, it gets rid of that extra layer of bloom. And on Xbox Series S specifically, they also reduce shadow quality a tiny bit in terms of resolution, but it's still uh, better than the last-gen consoles. Cool. I put uh, Series X next to PlayStation 5 in fidelity mode and in performance mode. I'm And honestly, uh, they're indistinguishable. I do not see any difference there. There's perhaps the slight chance that shadows in the distance can look slightly different depending upon the scene. And I think that's actually just some sort of oversight or difference because at times it can look slightly higher res in the distance on Xbox Series X and slightly higher res in other scenes on PlayStation 5. So it's maybe just like some sort of slight difference there. And for some reason, the Xbox consoles have a more intense motion blur than found on PlayStation 5. Another thing is I did compare these all these versions here to PC. And I did notice that PC currently does not have that uh, newer, punchier post-processing. So it's not as dark when you put it next to the newer gen consoles. Uh, and it also has an extra layer of depth of field that is uh, not on the console versions. And I noticed that for some reason, the shadow rendering is entirely different than the next gen versions. It just looks different. I don't know why, but that's kind of the way it is. But in general, we're looking at a nice, subtle upgrade in a lot of areas where I think the anti-aliasing is actually the biggest difference, yeah. And uh, I guess it should we should quickly note that I think both of us played this on the next-gen consoles and mm -hmm. neither of us encountered any weird crashes or anything like that. 
which the community has reported, but we were not able to duplicate this on any of our systems, so I'm really not sure what's going on there. Yeah, I think uh, I don't know exactly what's going on there. The only thing that I actually had any trouble with at all uh, was kind of upgrading the game on the Xbox platform. I, I have honestly no idea how to do it. Uh, I, I was like playing around there in the MS Store and also like looking for the option to download this Xbox Series X and S version there, and I couldn't find it, and I ended up actually having to kind of get a key. Uh, separately for it. Uh, but that's a whole other story. Moving on really quickly to loading times is that's another big difference other than the graphics uh, in comparison to the last generation versions of this game. Essentially to uh, check out the loading, I played through the first level and unlocked the second stage and measured the loading time to get into the second stage after a tiny little icon pops up. When doing this, it was pretty easy to see that the next gen versions of this game load it really, really quickly, a little over four seconds on PlayStation 5, and about four and a half seconds on Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S, and actually a little bit under that on PC with a 3.5 gigabyte NVMe SSD. In comparison to the last gen, that's like essentially more than 14, around 15 seconds to get into this stage. So it looks like PS5 has that ever so slight advantage. Yeah. It's not a huge boost over the last gen. Like it is three times as fast, I guess, which is great. But it, it and that's the point is it, it does actually make getting in and out of stuff a lot faster uh, and the game just feels snappier as a result. So I think it is a net win. I think it's good to now look at resolution. Essentially, you have six modes altogether here that I'm looking at, two modes per system, Xbox Series S, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. And let's first start with that fidelity mode, which is targeting 60 Hertz or 60 FPS. And starting with Xbox Series S. Here on Xbox Series S, it's targeting 1440p dynamic resolution. All these systems are going to be end up using dynamic resolution to a certain degree. Um, I did notice that it was more possible on Xbox Series S to count lower resolutions with uh, the lowest one that I ended up counting in an area being 1260p. And I presume it could probably drop lower as well in the heat of the action or in a very specific viewpoint. Uh, but it also does snap back up to 1440p afterwards rather quickly. So that's comparable then to, like you say, Xbox One X from last generation then. Uh, I noticed just even though perhaps there's uh, similar dynamic resolution ranges that the Xbox Series S version looks quite a bit better than Xbox One X do that better TAA. Yeah, going over to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, both of these in this fidelity mode, 60 Hertz are running a dynamic 4K setup. And I actually had a really hard time finding drops in general because this is similar to Marvel's Avengers 30 FPS mode where it is dropping resolution ever so slightly and must not be happening often enough. And the way it's kind of blending in with the TAA that it's pretty hard to find scenarios where it is dropping reliably. Uh, I did find an area in a cutscene where uh, I could test like for like very easily. And I did notice that Xbox Series X in this cutscene is dropping to 2088p in one moment. So a very small axis scale there, but at the exact same moment on PlayStation 5, it was running at a native 2160p. I would imagine based upon this kind of finding that PlayStation 5 will technically have a slightly higher resolution in those areas where res drops might occur. But like I said, I was having a hard time finding them all throughout. This is a kind of situation where I feel like dynamic resolution is almost not really a big deal where perceptually your eyes see what looks like a 4K image and any dips that do occur occurs so rarely that even when actively looking for it, it's very difficult to find them. Mm -hmm. So for all intents and purposes, it's basically perfect image quality for a 4K screen, especially, I guess, technically on the PS5, since it has a very slight advantage there. But still, uh, it does seem to look fantastic on those two machines and it's super, super sharp. And it is a nice upgrade over the last gen version. So for sure, for sure. Now let's move on to the next mode, which is performance mode on all these machines, Xbox Series X. PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series S, this is targeting 120 Hertz or 120 FPS. And let's start again with that Xbox Series S. Here, it looks to be using 900p dynamic. Uh, and I did notice actually that this mode on Xbox Series S was 
easier to count, one due to its lower resolution, so I could see the kind of resolution changing more easily in comparison to the, I would say, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X versions of this mode. Uh, I did count at its lowest, 720p here, on Xbox Series S and uh, kind of in that same area I was looking at earlier where I saw 2088p on Xbox Series X. Going over to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, like I said, dynamic 1440p here. Uh, the problem is on my set uh, and the way the PlayStation 5 works is that I have a television that either does 4K at 60, 1440p at 120, or 1080p at 120. And the PlayStation 5 doesn't have a 1440p output. So when I'm watching the game on my screen, I'm actually seeing the PlayStation 5 output to 1080p. So for me, it's not exactly easy uh, to capture uh, kind of 1440p footage here of the PlayStation 5. This, and this is what's interesting because if you actually look at the marketing material, mm -hmm. they specifically say 1440 on Xbox and 1080p yeah. 120 on PS5. And, you know, based on your original capture, you're like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. But I was playing the game myself on my uh, LG CX or C10 OLED, which does support, you know, 4K 120 hertz output. And I was like, the image quality looks this does not look like 1080p. <laughs> like this looks way too sharp to be 1080p uh and and so we we're like wait a minute we should we should check this so i actually tried to use the built-in uh, system mm -hmm. recording feature because even though i can display it on that tv i can't capture 4k 120 we don't have hardware capable of doing this essentially you know i discovered one the uh internal capture tool on playstation 5 cannot capture 4k 120 if you set it to 4k it'll drop back to 1080 when you try to capture video, specifically when using the 120 mode, but you can still capture screenshots. And so what I was kind of doing was just moving the camera around to get stair-stepped edges on things and then quickly taking a, a shot with the system. And then you could see, ah, okay, it is 1440p. It's the same on both systems. I do wonder what ended up happening there in terms of marketing, why they said the PlayStation 5 was 1080p and Xbox Series X was 1440p. Um, that'd be a quite a bit, that'd be quite an interesting and big difference, uh, but that's not, that's not the case. No, and I also want to point out that I did kind of skate around, and again, we couldn't capture this, but I did skate around, and there was a couple spots on both machines where I did see, okay, the pixels clearly drop, the resolution dropped slightly, and my guess is that they've probably th set a threshold that varies between 1080p to 1440p, and it can sort of cover the gamut there. But for all intents and purposes, based on just normal gameplay, it does seem to stick close to its 1440p target on both machines no idea like how often they actually drop that's not really something you can just say without um, without reliable capture essentially like uh, exactly and also like you you would really need to, to get the data a different way but perceptually i think it is basically 1440p on both and it looks fantastic you talking about that does make me wish i had a display that could show the playstation 5 version in all of its higher res glory but i'm stuck to 1080p here and you'll notice too in these recordings that i have that i did record the xbox series x version at 1440p 120 because i can and on PlayStation 5, I was limited to 1080p 120. So the footage you'll be seeing here, uh, back and forths between them, or even side-by-sides, will look uh, crisper and higher resolution on Xbox Series X, but that's just an artifact of what we can record there, or what I can record there. That's super important. If anybody's going to look at this video and be like, oh, Digital Foundry, blah, 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 did this, it's like, this is a technical limitation. It's because the Series X does allow you to actually set 1440p at 120 hertz, which still fits within the yep. previous HDMI standard. It's specifically 4K output at 120 hertz that requires HDMI 2.1 level bandwidth, which is not available in any of our capture devices. 2.1 is very, very new. So again, looking at your footage, this is the reason why it's going to look different between the two. So do not take any sort of clarity measurement from what you're seeing in this footage. Don't do it. If you do it, we will find you. No, I'm just kidding. I will find you. <laughs> so let's get over to that uh, kind of performance analysis. And I think this is actually really easy to talk about because in general, we're looking at excellent performance across every single device here. But let's start with our fidelity mode and PlayStation 5. This is easy to talk about because it's locked 60 FPS. I could not really find a dent in it anywhere across all of my play. Um, based upon what I've seen from the PC version, 
this makes a lot of sense. This game is pretty um, CPU light and GPU light actually. Uh, so it's just excellent across the board. I did find one hilarious scenario though, where I did see a stutter and I'm not sure what caused it, uh, where like the camera collided with one of the skate letters and the game flipped out and it just like paused for a second. <laughs> I think that's a bug though. It has nothing to do with performance, um, but that just made me laugh. Xbox Series X, slightly different, uh, very similar to PlayStation 5 in the fact that there doesn't seem to be any sort of real kind of GPU related drops or even normal CPU related drops that are look explainable based upon the content on the screen. But I did come up with an occasional like single drop frame when going around a course uh, occasionally. Uh, I'm not sure what exactly happens because it could happen just sometimes where you're like in the middle of doing a move or uh, you're just like kind of going across the terrain and it would happen. And I, only, I got a handful of these across my entire play on Xbox Series X in this fidelity mode here. Uh, so it's something that you may see. Xbox Series S, in my recordings, I didn't get any of those, but I presume they can also happen. Other than that, uh, th all my recordings here for Xbox Series S in fidelity mode, great 60 FPS, no problems at all. Okay, well, that's that's pretty simple then. What about 120 hertz mode? Yeah, this one's also uh, kind of simple with some slight differences here. You know, they're just interesting that they're there, but they don't actually have a great impact on the gameplay performance. Xbox Series X, let's start there. This is a really nice 120 FPS. Um, and like in the 60 FPS mode, I did encounter occasional single frame drops, either to what would be 16.6 .6 milliseconds, or I did see one, I think 20 millisecond drop, so 40 FPS uh, equivalent. Uh, it's just like single frames that'll just kind of drop all of a sudden. I did capture a number of those, and I also captured a number of those on Series S as well, which has a kind of similar performance profile here. The difference here um, is actually coming from the PlayStation 5 version. This, for some reason, is slightly less stable in 120 hertz mode than Xbox Series X. And I, I would just guess uh, that it has to do with like maybe a GPU limitation, like the resolution isn't dropping quickly enough at times or something like that, because you can see um, like tiny moments where uh, when you mess up, which all of my footage is me messing up here, by the way. I'm not good at Tony Hawk Pro Skater like John is, uh, and I haven't played it in almost 20 years, so <laughs> you have to excuse me. When you mess up, there's this little rewind effect that plays over your player character, and it looks really cool. It's like a VHS recording. When that plays on PlayStation 5, there's always essentially always a frame drop or two there. Um, so it seems like that's just like a GPU effect playing over it. You can also see it in other times on other stages, like camera uh, looks over like a larger set of terrain and all of a sudden there's like a tiny drop, uh, like a just a little short burst drop that I, that I think is then cleared up as the resolution, dynamic resolution kicks in and gets rid of it. And then the last kind of drop that we saw is when John was doing his uh, recordings for the last gen version of this game back in September of this year, I think it was, you did note that the, for some reason, this New York City stage at night is slightly heavier than every other stage. Uh, I went there just to see, okay, this is the heaviest stage that we know exists. How does it perform? And oddly enough, PlayStation 5 on this stage tends to get this like burst stutter drop in comparison to other stages where it's otherwise rather great on other stages. Something about the stage, uh, scales a little bit more poorly. And the way I kind of benchmarked this is where if you put like your skater against a wall on the New York stage, for some reason, like looking through the character model drops performance. I have no idea why. Um, it made me laugh because it just seems so arbitrary. This happens on PlayStation 5, which is kind of like drops a little bit here, but it doesn't happen on like Xbox Series X or S. So I presume for some reason, and I just assume it's because the PlayStation 5 is not like adjusting resolution quickly enough or something in comparison to the other versions uh, that it has tinier drops in the 120 FPS mode. I, I think it's it's really important to note though that uh, having played these as well, the reason you, you're looking at such unique situations is because just to find something <laughs> yes. to talk about here because by and large, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the frame rate in both of these versions is basically perfect. Like I really have no yeah. complaints. It, those tiny little hitches that can occur are so small, especially at 120 FPS, that it's it's not a problem. So again, the, I think what you're saying is is really just informational. It's it's just covering my bases here. So exactly, that, it's not really important. I have it in my notes here. For example, I do think, and I've played a number of 120 hertz games on all these next gen machines, and this is by far the most stable yeah. I've seen so far. Um, so it's a real delight in its 120 hertz mode. 
Uh, one last thing, just the Xbox Series S. I did mention how it was a very similar profile in 120 hertz mode to Xbox Series X, um, but like the PlayStation 5 version, I did capture a number of single dropped frames or two when that rewind effect occurs. So that's something that also technically happens on Xbox Series S, just to a slightly less degree. Okay. I think though, we're getting to the end of this video, more or less, and I just wanna say that I've played through all these versions so far on a lot of machines, and I think these next-gen versions are really, really good. Yeah. I didn't get any of the crashing, uh, like a lot of people are reporting out there, so I didn't have that negative experience, my only negative experience is trying to upgrade the game. Uh, and it, my recommendation for those who have the ability to play this game in its next-gen form and have the right screen is to play it in its 120 hertz mode, whether it's Xbox Series S, Xbox Series X, or PlayStation 5. The game, uh, it, it excels at high frame rate, and it feels so much better to play. Oh, man. And yeah, this this game was on my game of the year list. It's such a good game. It's a, it's the best re-envisioning of Tony Hawk mm -hmm. we've seen. It's so good. And one quick tip, if you own an LG CX and you're playing this at 120 hertz, do so with HDR enabled and be sure to enable uh, black frame insertion. I think it's like motion pro as they call it. Set it to high. Normally this does dim the image a lot in 60 hertz, but it gives you that CRT like perfect motion, zero blur. But when you do it at 120 hertz with HDR, the screen is still extremely bright. Uh, and it is just like the clearest looking thing you'll ever see on a flat panel. It's it's so perfect, that motion. <laughs> there is just no blur. I, uh, in comparison to you, I don't have that kind of sweet screen. So a lot of the B-roll you're seeing here in this video was just captured on Xbox Series X in its 120 hertz mode because I could get a 1440p output there. That's the only reason why. The only other thing that I wish this version had is that I saw on the PC is that for some reason in the next gen versions or these what we now call the current gen, the menus are locked at a 30 FPS with slight frame pacing issues. I don't know why they chose to do this because on PC it's unlocked and it just feels nice and not jarring when you go from 30 to 120 really quickly. So that's one thing I wish they would change is maybe make the menus yeah. maybe 60 hertz or something like that. Yeah, minor but weird. Um, but John, thank you so much for talking to me about these next gen versions of Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2. Sure thing, Alex. And if you did enjoy this video and found it informative, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, then hit that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to help us out and see this video in the highest quality available, well, support us on Patreon to get years worth of Digital Foundry content available in high quality for download. If you want to talk to John or me about Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 on all these machines, well, write a comment below or follow John and myself on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex, bringing you auf Wiedersehen und farewell.